Be Real. Live from the Be Real Lounge, you're with us in the lounge, your host, Daniel Lewis and Brother Brad Haynes. How you doing? Real nice, real nice. Man, doing, praise the Lord. Doing real good, man. Same here. Sunny day and uh, like loving the, it. like your new haircut, man. Looks looks real good. Dude. March did, on. Did a good job, man. I'm kind of, <laughs> you're, me and you are on the same wavelength, man. Spring comes, starts to get hot. And um, I'm getting ready to shave off the beard pretty soon too, man. I almost did it in the last couple. I'm days hoping. I'm more. hoping it's starting to warm up. It's gonna. Yeah. Even if we get a little cold now, yeah. it'll. Uh, I mean, March it'll is, stabilize. It goes yeah, back and forth. back and forth. March yeah. is one of those months. It's just yeah. kind of. But I still I love March because it's moving. Yeah. Kind of march on. Yeah. Calm man. down and march on. And you start to get the blooms coming mm-hmm. off. I'm, I think that one of my daffodils is going to bloom today. I mean, they're just getting ready to pop, and they uh, start seeing some signs. Yeah, the flowers on the peach trees are starting to swell up. You nice. know, they're getting rid of the buds. So, yeah, it's uh, it's not too far off time to cut the hair, man. To get, I mean, just out in it, uh, I was tilling everything, man. Turning it over the first time yesterday, it got hot. I was in shorts and a t-shirt, man. Nice. And, I mean, it felt good in the yep. sun, and it'll inspire you. I was like, man, I got to get rid of the beard. It's getting hot. <laughs> So, but I like it, dude. Looks good really beard. Looks really good, man. And uh, doesn't it always just feel good, man? To I don't know change things up. Yeah. I don't like the same old, same old. I'm kind of just a one of those. Me that too. Just changes. Yeah. You know, yeah. every everything. Yeah. Change my underwear every once in a while. <laughs> you know, never the exactly. same old, same old. That's right. <laughs> well, I think it's important, man, because like especially following the seasons and stuff like that i'm kind of like remember that movie jeremiah johnson man robert it's been a while. robert yeah, redford good. was in it yeah and he he had that big mountain man beard and then spring came man and he and he whittled it down looked like robert redford again. Yeah. but that's kind of when we follow those seasons we naturally change but it's kind of weird man if you get stuck into keeping a certain look for like as your trademark so long you get stereotyped into you can't change your look i remember this dude uh the one a guy I played basketball with in high school his dad always had a mustache we no one had ever seen him without one yeah and then one day he got wild and shaved his mustache and he was a handsome guy and everything but he had been this so peg hold into that mm-hmm. his wife didn't want to be she was like you have to grow it back like wow. he literally shaved it started growing it back right that second because yeah. it was so traumatic for all of his family and mm-hmm. everybody that they he couldn't change it he wanted to change his look <laughs> and he couldn't he was like you know and they would have gotten used to it over oh, yeah. a couple of weeks if he would have kept it that's just but it's always strange so i remember seeing that on the uh america's funniest videos that was one of the videos i've seen it years ago yeah it was a guy that had always had a beard and a, and a mustache you know right. the whole the whole growth thing yeah and his kids had never seen him shaved. And right. they were like nine and one was like seven. Right. And he's like, I'm going to shave. Yeah. And then, you know, they've never seen me. They, ever since I was born, I've had this. Yeah. And so he shaved it off. And he walks into the bedroom and his wife's like filming him, you right. know. And he goes in there. They and first they're screaming. like, who is that? Yeah. Yeah. And then the, then the seven-year-old like breaks down and just starts crying. Yeah. It's like, it's me. It's dad. They didn't want to get near him at first. <laughs> and then they were like kind of accepting it. And then they were still, they was crying like, Why'd you do this? It's not you. Yeah. It's you, but it's not you. I, I know. It's kind of weird, you know. It, it well, it but is. You do see somebody that's had a beard for a very long time, and they yeah. shave it off. They look like a totally, a totally almost a totally different. different person. Yeah. I mean, I look like a kid, a little kid when I do it. <laughs> First, it takes a while to get. Feels used. like a little kid too. Like, do you ever oh. like whenever you grow your stuff? Do you, I always the fun of shaving the beard mm. is carving it into different shapes yeah. as you're doing it. Yeah. Take it. I've got some of the craziest pictures. Of I've beards never took past. pictures, but you do. You took well, I'm going to do it this time. Cool, yeah. I've never done the full. I've done a Fu Manchu before, yeah. but 
I've never done like a full huge Paul Senior, you know, oh, from yeah. American Chopper. Like all, Golly. like I'm gonna do that That's this cool. time. Yeah. But and take Some a handle picture. Bars. Oh, dude, I'm going all the way down here yeah. and just I'm gonna shave out that middle part. I've got somewhere I look like an 18th century peasant, you know, somewhere, <laughs> you know, you shave this part out and I've had so many crazy designs. That's One cool. is this crazy mustache I had where I look like this crazy, like I actually looked Mexican. I'll have to show you that you one. You know, it'd sometime. be neat if you would take those pictures and kind of make it one of those Brad Art things. Right. And maybe throw just like maybe a, I will. a quick tune with yeah. it and just kind of go through. That would be funny, wouldn't it? That would be really neat. Dude, I would some of them are that. so kind of embarrassing and some like – that's because it'd, it'd be fun about that it. one year i've i really wanted we weren't just talking about all this man i don't know <laughs> what we're doing but that one year man i'd always wanted to grow like a civil war beard like yeah, a jeb yeah, stewart that is and cool that one year i think it was like 2010 mm. tanya gave me permission and i did it <laughs> for the first time and it was i don't think it was a jeb stewart beard i kind of it was more of a Stonewall Jackson beard, but dude, when <laughs> I had a beard, when I shaved that one, I did some crazy stuff with the goatee and some weird stuff. And it's like, it's shocking, man. You're like, what in the world is that? Like, you look like a crazy Viking. And I had long <laughs> hair at one point in these beards too. Wow. When I first, so I've I never been a hairy person, man. So just, you know, count yourself blessed right. on that situation. Cause I just, I cannot do that. Yeah. I cannot grow anything like well, right in here. Cool goatee. Well, Dude, yeah, I, I mean, mean, it's just, but it's not as thick, and it's right. I can't do nothing right here. It's nothing. Well, sometimes it's a blessing that I don't have to shave as often. Sure, it's a blessing because yeah. I hear about guys, especially like uh, maybe a little bit more hairier than you, yeah. it's like constant shaving yeah. all the time, and then even the afternoon is already yeah. the back, you know, pretty yeah. much. Woof, as soon as you shave it, woof, well, it's just back. having a beard is actually my dad always said it, and I didn't believe him, but having a hmm. beard is a lot more work than shaving every day. Oh, I bet because trimming it and it gets mm-hmm. all wild and you look like ted kaczynski and you have to to work on it i had a really stuff. long mustache at one time and it was just like you could feel it on your lips every yeah. once in a while it aggravated me yeah. i mean, constantly walking around like yeah. pushing it off my lip yes then i'd trim it and then you know just a I week later it'd be back and i'm yeah. like then eating my hair right here on the corners it always seems to grow in and, it's like, burr, 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 and you just feel it I eventually know. just get used to it yeah i was like maybe i've never had my mustache this long yeah you know, it's really long and I said, maybe just kind of just, you'll eventually get used to it. And I, and I did, but occasionally I'd still catch Me that too. one little hair going right here. And it's just like. Argh. I used to actually like bring it yeah. in there and start messing with, with it. And then, da, 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 da. Exactly. <laughs> and then the worst thing too, did you have this? I, I've done those before. I can never commit to the huge mustache because it actually will start to cover up my mouth. Yeah. And then when I start putting in the food, literally, dude, I would go through like five napkins where if I would <laughs> eat like a hot dog off. or something, yeah. leaving it on there, it later. was crazy yeah. <laughs> to where I'm like, how did these dudes like Jeb Stewart or whoever, how did they, because if you look at his mustache, dude, it's insane. If you pulled one of the hairs, it's probably almost a foot long Yeah, and he'd keep them. I'm like, dude, he probably had all kinds of stuff in there. Probably could have little birds it. and stuff yeah. would fly out. You probably could have dipped his whole face in water and made like beef stew. I, I mean, it's all this like vegetable soup. You know? All this stuff would come Dude, out. Dude, that is great. <laughs> I don't think I've laughed that hard on. I genuinely that was. I love humor like that. That was great. Just dip his beard in, yeah. and you got beer, uh, beef, beef stew. stew. That's it, man. Just all oh kinds of stuff gosh. coming out of there. Well, we went eight minutes on a crazy facial hair tear. <laughs> facial hair tear you never know we're just being real but it was fun so yeah. i may load something like that on brad art but i'm kind of embarrassed i don't think that i can do I, that I, I'll I like, so. do but it, i'll man. definitely cool. show them to you at yeah. least yeah i think everybody else will be interested in seeing that too <laughs> yeah I think it'd be just neat so i've never seen anything really like that there might yeah. be something out there i've never youtube <laughs> right <laughs> like i'm just like uh well i don't even crazy know what you would... facial i don't know what you would either beard art beard art you know, beard art. Some Instead pretty, of Brad art, it's beard art. No kidding, man. Brad Maybe that's art, what I'll name art. it. I'll yeah. name it. Brad if I art, do beard it. art. <laughs> <laughs> We're having fun today. I'm, yeah. The sun's shining, dude. Oh, I'm man, just. I love it. It's, uh, man, I hope other people are feeling rejuvenation and like that, hey, March. it's going to be okay. Yeah, we're moving in we're, we're, to the warmer yeah. weather, hopefully. And it's just, I mean, it's on its way. It is. Either way. Even if we get a week of cold. Yeah, it'll just snow. make us appreciate the 
the other, but things are going to start popping soon and blooming and you I know. love it. I love driving down the road and seeing those yellow flowers the pop up. The forsythias. Yeah, you know, yep. they're just like random wild Oh, the things. daffodils and then the forsythias are like the bushes that are bright yellow. These are like green and then the tops yellow. The daffodil. Daffodil, yeah, yeah. I guess that's what it is. Yeah. It's just... Aren't they good? They're, they're all over the place. First thing that pops up. I would up. love to have them all down my road. Yeah. Some people have them all over their banks and yep. stuff, and they just pop up during the spring, and yeah. then you don't see it. Uh, they're a bulb. All you got to do hmm. if you want them, I got some I can separate for you, get yeah. you some bulbs, and then you plant them, and every year they spread. Just pop right up. And they pop up in spring, and then they die. That's you cool. cut them down. They're the first thing that pops up. It's kind of the daffodil, then the forsythia, and kind of that's a good sign of the ground temperature. I plant lettuce normally when the forsythia blooms huh so so god kind of saying hey yeah it's time you you it's better to look at the natural signs than to if you stick with the calendar you're gonna get in trouble oh yeah you know but if you look at the natural signs the ground will tell you when it's ready to be planted you know so like when the irises bloom it's a good time to set out your tomatoes so just watch these natural Signs cool. and there is no law of nature. It's it's God's law that yeah, nature follows. That's right. I love it. Yeah, one of my gardening mentors, man, he taught me that old Frank, man, and I learned a lot from him. And it's really that's the way the Indians used to do it, the way all mankind did it until now. We think everything's on well, just like we do everything. We put it on a schedule and all mm. this, and he wants us to follow him. It's his timing. It is, man. It's all about his. It timing. really is. It's but, hard to learn that sometimes. It is. Especially in certain. Well, you lose some crops sometimes before you learn it. That's the truth, man. You know. Throw it out there and frost. Yeah. Bite. But when you when you learn it, man, you learn it. And then it's kind of like you don't believe anything until you've been through it yourself. And then when you are, you learn. We're pretty fickle yeah. as humans, man. We like, uh, we'll take it in. But until it happens to us, we don't really know if that. Yeah. If I think he has fun bite. teaching. You know, I think he set up all this because we're natural learning things yeah and so he's he's the main teacher he's the number yeah. one teacher and so when he's teaching this i think he loves to teach i do too he is man. all wisdom and knowledge and he's constantly he's constantly throwing that out there now we can be in the back of the class making airplanes and throwing spitballs sure or we can be in the middle or in the front of the class yeah. going hey i'm ready to learn some more yeah and then nobody likes test even the front Student right. don't like tests, yeah. But we need those tests to see if we're where we're at, what see, we've been taught, yeah. To see and then we'll we move it. on. Hey, you know, we'll move on, or we'll be stuck in that same grade. That's right. It's and pretty man, neat. The powerful point about those tests too is, it, if you really want to learn, the test is as much for you. You don't really care about. You do care about the grade because it reflects what you know. But if you really want to learn, it you don't care about getting a grade. You care about getting it right. You want to see yep. what you got wrong so you can do better the next time. It's a personal challenge. It is. you know. But we've been taught just get a good grade and then you forget what you learned. doesn't really matter. Yep. Kind see, of just scheme through or slide through yeah. and you're still going to make it. That's why I love dudes like Abe Lincoln and stuff that were self-learners. That has gone away. We need apprenticeships and we need people that have passion to learn. It's not about just going through a system and getting an A and then forget everything you know and you're still a dud. I mean, that guy didn't have a formal education and he took all the books and and became a lawyer, man, learned everything himself. And, uh, you know we need that that's what oh, yeah. what made everything good and we we kind of lose that man and just getting back into real life i mean there's so many scriptures in the bible but really what got me because i was one of those that was just kind of you know there for a short time just kind of scheming through and going through and just uh you know i'm gonna make it to heaven anyway yeah. so i'm just gonna lay low do what i do what i can or do what i want to do but still i'm loving jesus sure and then you get to that scripture and there's many scriptures in the bible but the one of the most powerful ones is of course revelation 316 lukewarm yeah and that's the one it's just just gliding on through oh yeah just overlook that one right yeah just kind of overlooked that one but i mean we just i mean there's a lot of us just sitting thinking well we're saved and so we're going to heaven and that's all i need and that's the guy with the one talent that's the one that buried the one talent and then he comes back and say hey what did you do with what i give you right and that's the question for all of us he's questioned me that me too what are you doing with what i've given you every day 
every day, all the time. I mean, I mean, I give you life. What are you doing with it? And 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 not a matter of righteousness. I just read this this morning, man. You said you were in in Romans again. And yes, loving I was, it. I was in it this morning, man, right here. And I read this one, and this is what we're talking about right here, man. It's cool. I just saw this. I was like, if this comes up, I'd, I'd be neat. Said at verse. And I hate even saying the verses, and we'll get into that later. In yeah. uh, 420 Romans, uh, talking about uh, Abraham, yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. This is why it was credited to him as righteousness. Mm -hmm. See, what's righteousness is our belief. Yep. No, you know, not anything. It's God. That we it's do. from God. It's, it's a gift of God. It is, and then it's uh, nothing we can do. Nothing. But then we'll, believe. But but when we do, well, that'll happen. Yeah. But it's all hinged on uh, the righteousness, is the belief in His promise. Yep. And see, that's that's real. That's that's the gospel, that's man. <laughs> like, it is do you really believe? And Paul really lays it out in that part he does. when he brings up it's Abraham cool. and everything. He's kind of he's he's kind of speaking to the Jews, but we can learn so much. Yeah, Romans just blows my mind, and I know I've said this on other shows. If somebody's been listening, and they've been listening to us for these two years, uh, more than two years. Sorry. It's just it just. Romans, I don't know what. It, every time I'm like looking forward to reading, reading Romans, Me I was too. going through Acts and I was like, oh, cool, Romans is next. It's kind of like Romans and the rest of the books after Romans, First Corinthians, that's right on. It's just kind of a different it's, style. It's and, a different style. It yeah. gets out of the stories and it goes right to the heart and then the yeah. meat of to the kind matter. Of preaching. Yeah, kind of the preaching of it. And I just, uh, but something about Romans, I, I got to the end of it just the other day and I started over. I'm yeah. like, I want to go through that again because it's just. Like Adrian Rogers says one time, and I enjoy listening. I used to enjoy listening to him, and I still, whenever I have a chance, but it's been a while, uh, he said, if I was stuck on a desert <laughs> island and only had one book to read, it would yeah. be Romans. Right. And, or to have to one. read until I, you know, until I was dead, it'd be Romans. And I, and I have to totally agree with that. I love the entire book. You need the whole Bible in order to understand Romans. Yeah. And, but... You still, if you just had Romans, yeah. I mean, it's just something it lays about it, out. it. Just, I mean, it's always been there ever since. You know, when I started reading the Bible in two thousand eight, I went through the Gospels and got through Acts, and I got into Romans, and it never was so clear to me. Yeah, the whole the gospel, gospel story. It just was boom. Yeah, I mean, I needed the I needed the Gospels. I needed Mark. I needed Matthew, I needed Luke, I needed John, I needed Acts, but it was just that Romans. It just kind of was the. I don't know. It's just really, and it still does. It's and, uh, one of the and most I wanna, powerful. And, yeah, First Corinthians is powerful. All of them is just great. I love First and Second Peter. It's uh, two another my favorite books. But something about Romans when I read it, I just was like, I can't get enough. I want to go back. Yeah. I, I could stay in Romans for a year yeah. or more. Yeah, I mean, might, I could just really never get out of it. But yeah. I, <laughs> he, he takes me out of it. But I like I, just, uh, I like I Hebrews a lot. Yeah, Hebrews I'm, is really I'm a big another powerful Hebrews. one. Guy, and it's very similar to Romans in a way. It is, you know, goes, just laying out the whole story and yep. tracing a it's lot into of the stuff faith and, and all and that. Getting into yeah, it goes it. back into the Old Testament a you lot, know, yeah. a lot more. Hebrews really talks about the Old Testament. Yeah, uh, you can see some Abraham and Romans and stuff like that, which you were just talking about. But yeah. Hebrews, man, it goes back to just about all of them. Kind of, it kind of opens it up like what you would think Jesus did out. with the Emmaus Road, yeah, with the two guys where he just opened Scripture and showed Jesus. Hebrews yeah. is kind of like that; it just shows Jesus well, all through the Old what's Testament. What's kind of cool is like you see that in Acts, man, mm. where Stephen preached just before he gets stoned he does he lays out the whole yeah. gospel story from the beginning then when talking peter, to the jews when peter stands up and and when they think that he's all drunk and he lays out one of the most beautiful sermons yes. in the bible he preaches the whole story again and i love that man that, I do too. that gets me to this point man that we'll get into it's really been on my heart that I, we've preached on it before but i think that it just kind of goes over people's head it kind of goes over my head sometimes of just like we were talking they told the whole story the bible is about stories it's about telling the story not about regurgitating or saying a verse out of context with the story i think there's a reason why they were all written in letters to be read at, at one time as a letter to get the story and i think that we have done a great disservice by taking out the verses 
apart from the story and we have a big problem man and i'm going to illustrate that i think in a creative way at some point here but we added these numbers and then we don't understand what they mean in the story Mm -hmm. we would we never do that with any other book or any other literature and i argue that we do it because we're lazy we'd rather hang on to one thing and then take it apart we don't have to cover the whole story and i thought isn't that weird how like you just said no other book has those names and scriptural numbers yeah and i know it's like what you said it's good for reference and it's good for study and stuff like that but it's weird that no other book lazy no other book that i know that you can go in there and go romans 837 or whatever you know you just and paul and jesus didn't jesus didn't say he didn't talk on the sermon on the mountain say verse 36 yeah. and then go on he he's there's a reason why he didn't and when people used to reference the bible before we added the numbers they would reference the, the story, story. Yeah. and see because we don't reference the story of what it means we've lost the story and now we hang on a verse we start fighting about it when you do that there are great contradictions in the bible yeah. if you take the verses apart from the other verses you i could take the bible with verses and i could turn it into anything that i wanted to oh yeah and people have and they have all day long great and powerful false gods and non-religions cults are all over it cults you know they're all over it and um it's horrible and that's what's happened and uh so i think that we have to do something about it And and i and i actually associate the word cult with denomination yeah, me too. It's right there with it. It's, it's a, almost an equal kind of equal. Well, well we had talked about that in our with late, religion. Whenever um, a cult is in in reference to rites and rituals, mm-hmm. so any organization that gets together and does rites and rituals as their way to connect, it's the spirit of the Antichrist. It's taking the place of Christ. Anything, God says he does not want that. How many times does he have to say that? It's all in his word. I don't want that. No. I don't want that. Jesus came preaching that. Yeah. And, and and then we say, but the system is good, so if we do the thing, then it's good. And I've preached on it a million times. We're but good. People if we do the thing, we're good. That's the same thing they were doing when mm-hmm. Jesus came yeah. to say no, and they killed him for it. If he came back today sure. into the church and preached the same message, we'd crucify him again. That's it. Or put him away as a domestic terrorist, probably, yeah. and then waterboard him or something. Yeah, we call him a Pharisee. You know, I don't know what would happen, but I know that we wouldn't accept him, and no. I know that they rejected him and i know that when you speak his word today you still get rejected because man it goes against the man mankind and the world and what we want to have itch our ears yeah it goes against us but it's real freedom it is real freedom it goes against it goes against us it goes what we really want and that's me 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 Mm -hmm. me 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 jesus don't preach me Right. He preaches others. Yeah. He preaches himself and then he preaches others. Yeah. And it's all when it, and you, you go into a world where everything's me, 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 just like him little birds on that movie. Mm-hmm. Me, 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 me. It's all what I want. It's all what's good for me. It's all what I want to hear, what I want to listen to, what I enjoy, what makes me happy. Me, yeah. me, 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 me. And then you got one who is who is actually God in the form of of, a, of something that speaks up and goes it's not about you it's him 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 he's constantly preaching God he's constantly preaching others and that's what it's supposed to be about and when you get into a, like I just said when you get into a world of me 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 it it don't work it don't work and you got to fight against the grain you got to fight against yourself and that's yeah. the hardest battle yeah. is the fight against yourself yeah and you can only do it with him. Well, yeah. if you try to do it on your own, you ain't gonna do you, it. You, there's no, there's no fight. What's the back? It's you against you. But back. if you have him, it's spirit against flesh. Yeah. Spirit can always overcome if you hold on to Jesus Christ. Uh, the flesh is weak, but the spirit. What well, the flesh is willing, but the what is it? I'm like George <laughs> Bush over here. Uh, we don't get fooled. I won't get I'd fooled again. <laughs> No, but uh, the flesh is weak and spirit is strong. That's I right. Think. It's, I know. <laughs> I, me I know the meaning. Of I know it, what man. you're saying. It's where he's sleeping and he's like the flesh is fallen and not doing what the spirit wants to that's do, it. and they're in conflict with yeah, each they were, other. They were all sleeping. But see, that's why we know the story doesn't matter. The see, that's what they. It doesn't matter. Like we need to to hold on to the truth of the stories that's it and we need to be preaching those stories and it's like this man if i pulled out this book right here and i just said um good morning old sport you're having lunch with me today and i thought we'd ride up together 
do, do you know what book that's from? Do you know what that means in any way? Um, he was. If it didn't say sport, I'd say Jeremiah. Yeah, and <laughs> and and we'll uh, we'll read even more. He was balancing himself on the dashboard of his car with that resourcefulness of movement that is so particularly American that comes, I suppose, with the absence of list, lifting work or rigid sitting in youth, and even more with the formless grace of our nervous sporadic games. Wow. Now, you said American and you said car, so it's got to be around the 30s or 40s or up. Right. Right. I, I mean, and so... But what book have no so clue? So this is what you get. Do you, do you have any idea what the meaning of that is? You could read that and then tell your own tale about it, and then you'd have a sermon. You would. For this modern church day. Of course. Yeah. Uh, I'll just turn to another page here. It was a halt to end my association with his affairs. Mm. And see, that's what we do with the Bible. We're, it was a halt to the, uh, the only completely stationary object in the room was an enormous couch on which two young women were buoyed up as though upon an anchored balloon. That's it. And, and we, we could have a whole show about that. And One time there was two young women on my couch. One of them left a pocket knife. See, I still got that pocket knife. And that, I'm, I'm doing this for a reason because the Lord told me last night to do this. Okay, I'm telling you, you don't know what that book is. It's a classic. I would tell you at the end. Let's go on to another book here, man. Um, we got 66 of them. You know. <laughs> the sound of the inexpertly blown conch interrupted them as though they were <laughs> serenading the rising sun. Uh, the conch. Did you say a conk interrupted them? Is uh -huh. that what that was? Yeah. And there would be some literary people that might know the book, but they if you haven't read this book, you don't know what it means. You know, uh, your only hope is keeping signal fire going as long as there's light to see. And see, that's what we do. And you don't know what the story is. So the second book, you don't know. The third book, I'm not going to do this forever. One day, a, this is a different book, one day a chocolate ration was issued. There had been no such issue for weeks and months past. He remembered quite clearly that precious little morsel of chocolate. Precious little morsel okay, of chocolate. That's, that's the third book. And then we'll go into the fourth one here. And um, and I'm just open. I don't have anything marked. This is just opening up. I was your father's friend, and I'm your friend, and I warn you as a friend and an honest one that wants to protect you and keep you out of harm and trouble to turn your backs on that scoundrel and have nothing to do with him, the ignorant tramp with his idiotic Greek and Hebrew, as he calls it. Wow. Okay, so that's what we've done with the Bible, and we do this, and, and there's a story to be told. If I wouldn't just read this stuff, and I would just tell you the story of the chapter that it came from, it would be very beneficial. But doing this, I've confused you. You don't even know what it means. And what these books were, the first one that I read out you know of. What it, you know what it's done for me? It's What's made that? me. It's made me rely upon what you're going to say next, so I could get the full context of the story because I don't know that book. You don't know it. I don't know it, so I'm going to rely on you to tell me what that book is, what the name of the book is, and what the story means right. to you for me. Exactly. And see, instead, <laughs> what we should be doing is I should be just telling you about this story. And then we could talk about the story, whether or not you had read it or not. If I told you the story, it might inspire you to go and read it. Just like, wow, that's a pretty neat story. I mm -hmm. never, there's something, and these are just secular books. But I read first a couple excerpts from The Great Gatsby. The second one from The Lord of the Flies. The third one from 1984. And the fourth one from Mark Twain, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Hmm. You wouldn't have known what those, and I didn't search for things that just didn't say who it was, or I just turned to random spots. That's it. That's what we do with the Bible. And if you don't see that that's what we've done and why we have such horrible confusion, then I don't know what to do for you. I've tried to do every single analogy the Lord gives me that that's I can it. think of. Another thing would be as you're reading that, see, I, would, I couldn't be like I am now and actually say, hold on a minute, Brad. As you're reading that story or you're reading those few lines and then you're going to come up with the story that actually – goes for a while yeah i can't stop you at any point and say i'm not fully understanding what that means can you help me right i don't i can't even say that right 
I can't get, I, I can't do that. I have to sit there and listen to you fully tell the story and then hope to get something out of it and then leave. And you're hoping that I actually got something out of it. I'm hoping that I actually heard something that I got something out of it, but I didn't fully comprehend what you were exactly saying for the whole story Amen, because you were dude. just telling me the stuff. Yeah. But that's all I needed for the entire week until I see you again, or maybe I'll be back on Wednesday. Okay. Thanks, Brad. And that would be all fine if you're doing it for a book club and you really don't want to read the book anyway and it doesn't matter. But if you are going to be tested, if you're going to be tested on it right, (laughs) in your analogy that you go through the learning to be tested, okay, if in your English class you were supposed to read The Great Gatsby and you're tested on it and you weren't and you fail, Okay, that is, he is required that we understand the Bible. He's required it. The spirit Even if it was for a measly class, a worldly class, for a book that has nothing to do with anything, is never going to get you anywhere, you would read that stinking book in order to get a good grade so you could pass and get a certificate so you could do whatever you're wanting to do. You don't want to fail, so you're going to read this book. But we take the Bible and just leave it up on the shelf, which is life itself, which is the Word of God, the truth, the one who's speaking to us, and the only thing that matters, and only if we want to know the meaning of life and everything, that why even we're here, the glory to God. And then, but we just leave it sitting there. And He's testing our application of it. He said that the man that hears my words and doesn't put him to practice is a fool. So there's this thing: you have to hear His words, understand the story, and then apply His story to your story. See, if you don't do that, it's meaningless. Mm. See, if you think that that your relationship with Jesus is hearing the word, you're you're deceived. It's the spirit of the Antichrist. If you go in and you think that because you have heard the Bible, someone reads it to you, and you think about one sentence about it for a couple minutes and then sing a song, that ritual has taken the place of your personal relationship and dependence and reliance on Jesus. See, Jesus never did that. He never just came and pontificated something and said, we're done. He gave stories and meanings and application. And he was, it was all the knowledge was so that you'd actually do it. You can know how to plant a garden and never plant it. You don't have a garden. What are the, what are the excuses for that? And the one I've heard is, well, I don't understand it. Uh. <clears throat> is that going to fly? When you're standing before God, it's is that rid- really going to fly? It's ridiculous. I mean, really, you wouldn't do it from a teacher. You wouldn't do it. You don't. If they told you to read it. that, and you didn't, and you, this is this is fifty percent of your final grade. Really, you're going to fail if you don't read that book and give me a book report on it. Right. And you're going to go up to the end and say, and they, you don't do it. Yeah. The teacher comes up to you and goes, "Why didn't you do that? That's fifty percent of your grade. I'm going to fail you. You're not going right. to pass this class yeah. at all for the whole entire semester. I just <clears> didn't <throat> understand it." That's not going to fly with that teacher. And Daniel, let's be real here. Let's be real honest. Why don't we understand it? Because I'm not asking. Do you understand those excerpts that are? Do you understand the Great Gatsby based on the couple of lines I gave you? No. That's why we don't understand it. That's it. If you read the Great Gatsby, you would understand it. That's it. And that. If you read the Bible, if you actually, if you actually would sit down and read it, you would understand it. If you don't understand it, the reason why is because you've never read it. Ask him. I I know that that's true. I do too. Anybody, I've never ran across someone that read the whole thing and poured their self that said, I just don't understand it. The people that have read it that do are shocked by it and say, oh my gosh, that's pretty harsh, but they understood it. There's there's parts, there's, you know, to a point, certain point that's true. There's points that I don't understand. Yes, me but too. I keep going and I keep reading because this is the, God's word. But you understand, but I understand the story exactly. You know what I mean? How how much simpler can it get? And oh, well. I just don't understand. It's just an excuse. And it's scary. And it's not that we're saying we're better because we've done it. Please that excuse. Well, me too. Please understand that. It's just that, man, this is the key to life, right? We're just trying to wake you up. We're just trying to go, look, quit using everybody else's excuse because that's probably the number one. Yeah. I'm not sure if that is, but I've just what I hear all the time. Yeah. I just don't understand it. And look how easy it would be if I did this every week and I started a book club over here where you didn't read The Great Gatsby, but every week I read you verses. I just picked out what I wanted and I presented to you the story and I made up my own story about The Great Gatsby. 
and everyone did that and no one read the whole story, we would have all these different clubs believing that there's all these different meanings of the Great Gatsby. When if you read the movie, uh, read the movie, if you read the book or watch the movie, you know what it means. Yep. But see, that's what we've done is we've got. I don't really want to focus on that part of Gatsby's story that doesn't fit in with my life. I'd like to create another club where we focus on you know this part of the story. And it's if you can't see that that's what happened, I don't know what to do. I see clearly that that's what's happened, and yeah. and we have to we have to do something. First of all, the leaders should stand up of the churches. The preachers should stand up and say, "I'm not the, the only, ones who have been called. I'm not the only one that's supposed to be preaching here." Now, this is another thing that people get into. Well, they say because I don't make any money from preaching and then they automatically think I'm against preachers making money the Bible says that those that preach the gospel should receive their living from the gospel but that's not as a job the people that are listening should take care of the people's needs that are getting fed if if you eat someone's corn you pay them for the corn if someone is feeding you and inspiring you in the word and you have money to give them you give it to them but there there's multiple pastors or preachers you know I thought that the way church really should work is if you were going to gather like that that everyone just puts cash in an envelope and writes a person's name on it in the church that they want to give it to no writing it off on the taxes no any of that just a secret basket somewhere and you put money it in every week for somebody that you know that needs money and that's the way that it would work but you know they should start by leading and say we're doing this wrong you know we're not doing this right and get doesn't in, god supply and getting it back on 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 track doesn't god supply my wrong every saying need that? every need and sometimes he uses people to do it but it's him that does it not the people exactly you know and I, I can I, i've i can honestly say that god has supplied my every need me too he has supplied my every manna need. and quail I anything mean, he's ever called me to do anything he's ever asked me to do he has supplied he's opened the door and yeah. it's already been there i've been just like open the door and i see everything just kind of sitting there Instead of making stuff up in my mind that are what I would love to do because I'm like to do this. Exactly. And then call it God's calling. Sure. And then get all this stuff together and ask for help to get it together. Well, Daniel, when he asked, when I sent you out without nothing, he sent the, the 72 out with nothing. And he said, when I sent, when they came back, he said, when I sent you out. And I'm asking you this question as, as I'm saying it. Did you lack anything when I sent you out? Did you lack anything? <laughs> My answer, anything. my answer is the same as theirs and yours. I had an abundance. Nothing, Lord. I had him. Nothing. nothing. I had Even a, in my flesh, I'm like walking in here every Wednesday, yeah. and I'm like, I have nothing. Nothing. But it's him that gives me everything. We lack nothing. I lack nothing. I don't because need of him. For anything. There's I, I nothing I, I need. Don't. Exactly. That he hasn't provided. Oh, my gosh. He's great. Praise so, God. I don't know, man. It, it starts with that of just, hey, leaders saying, hey, I'm sick of reading The Great Gatsby out of context, you know. And Let's dig into this. Let's yeah. see what where are you at with Jesus, just yeah. like you've said. Yeah. Where are you at with Jesus? Where are you at in the where Bible and where are you at in yeah. the, what are the you spirit? Reading? What are you reading? Let's just open this up yeah. as church. Exactly. Let's open this up as church. Everybody has a word to bring. That's right. Everybody has a hymn to sing. That's right. Everybody has something to give. Yep. One body in Christ. That's right. We're all members of that body. And we've broken it down to, well, you're a mopper and you're you vacuum on Thursdays and you clean downstairs on Saturdays yeah. and I'm the one that's supposed to speak and the only one that's supposed to speak unless I'm sick and then he'll speak. And golly, and I mean, you know let's pick that where's apart. Jesus. Let's pick that. That gets uh they say the reason why is because that's my spiritual gift. Mm. Okay, that we have different gifts of the spirit. Okay, this is my argument on that. Okay. What are the fruits of the spirit? All of those things, I could label them out. I'm not going to love and faith and all this. Do you only get one thing? No. Do you only say, well, I just don't have faith because all he's gifted me with is love. Okay, that's a fruit of the Spirit. But then you go to the gifts of the Spirit and you say, well, I only get one. I'm a, I'm a teacher. I'm a preacher. I'm a this. I'm a that. I'm a janitor. Okay, this is the deal. It's just like the fruits of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit, He will enable whenever He needs that gift. You have all the gifts of the Spirit. 
He's going to enable that gift when he wants, when it fits his cause, just like you have all the fruits of the spirit, you know, and he's going to enable you to do these things when he wants to do them. But to say that you wouldn't have the ability to do anything limits the spirit. Yep. That's like saying, I'll never be able to have love because all I got is faith. I'll never be able to have goodness. But yet we say that, that, well, I just have the gift of prophecy and I don't have any of the other gifts. It's not your gift to begin with. It came through the Holy Spirit that's working in you. Amen. And we can do all those things whenever he wants us to do them. That's it. And I'm not saying that you won't have a certain personality type that would lend you to certain things easy. He's made you. But don't limit the spirit in you to say, well, I just, this is my gift. See, we've been taught that's all the wrong way. That's what they've told me to do. You know, they need this, so that's what I'm going to do. You know, like, I'm a healer, but I don't I don't have this other thing. I'm like, you ain't a healer. The spirit in you will heal people through you anytime that you're open, and it needs to be done. And the same will happen with prophecy or gifts of tongue. And go back and look at that because you're going to say, well, no, I've really studied it. It said that the spirit enables these gifts as he sees fit. So that's that's the way it all happens. One of the commandments of Jesus is to go and preach. Yeah. And he said, if you love me, you'll follow my commandments. Yeah. Are you preaching? Yeah. Well, I'm not. That ain't my gift. People say, are you preaching? It's hard to preach something you don't know, well, right? Because we've made it a job. Well, I don't feel called to be a job as a preacher. If somebody called me up this afternoon and said, Daniel, I'll give you $300 to speak tomorrow, this Saturday. Mm-hmm. Can you do it? Well, what am I speaking about? The Great Gatsby. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to go on what Brad told me right. for an hour every week. There you go. I don't really know much about it. Mm-mm. No, you need to get somebody else because I don't know the Great Gatsby. Right. I really don't. I've right. never even opened that book or even right. I don't think I've ever I've heard of it, but it's I've never that, even looked at it. It ain't one of my favorites. Yeah. I don't know why it's such a classic. It yeah. never really did it for me, but it's interesting. I just story. don't read books. I just don't <clears> like. I've never read books until 2008 when all of a sudden I had a hunger for the Bible. Yeah, and I haven't read Congo is the only book I've ever read fully through. Cool. They made a movie out of it. Like I think it? it was like in the nineties. I had to read it for school. Yeah. I had to read it for school. It was all right. Yeah. The book was actually way better than the movie. Right. I mean, it just totally ruined that movie. It just I actually really that saw good. that movie too. I thought it was er. Yeah, it was, it was an er. But the <laughs> book was great. I mean, it gives you this picture cool. in your head and you're going through the book and all this stuff. Only book I've ever fully read. Neat. Except for the Bible. Yeah. Only book. Wow. Yeah. That's wow. how illiterate, illiterate I am. No, dude. <laughs> I just don't like reading. Yeah, I never I, have. I never did Except either. for this. I mean, I, I don't know Something why. Changed. And I do know why. Yeah. I do know why, but I don't know why. It's another flesh, and it's another spirit issue. Yeah. Spirit loves it. Yeah. Flesh does not like to read. I can't stand reading. I ain't got time to read. I don't know, Matt. I, get, I know that we're all different in that. I used to hate reading as bad as you in high school. I went to college, and I, hated it. And I found a love for it in college, and I just... All I did was read, but I didn't read I, Magaz- I, magazines. I've never read. I'd look at the pictures. G- Gatsby either all the way through. I've read parts of it. But Every once in a while, I'd read an article if, it, if I found interest in it. Yeah. Oh, cool. This computer's coming out. Read a little article. Yeah. Oh, cool. That phone's coming out. Read a little article. Something technological that I was interested in. Other right. than that, I was not reading anything. I'm with you. I don't know how I got through high school. Right. I couldn't stand reading. I'm so grateful for all these people that put out movies with these books because they would be like, you need to read this book. We're going to do a book report on the end of the month. I'd go watch the movie. Yeah. Of course, the movie is totally almost opposite of what the book is. They should hold I'd slide to through it. with that C every time. Right. And it's sad, I ha- but I well, didn't like it. That's back to the point. We can do that in worldly endeavors, but in Revelation 3.16, he said that a C is lukewarm. Mm-hmm. He said, you don't make it. It's average. That's who you are. He said, you made it. We say it's average. He said, you're not in me. That's it. So that's the deal with the Bible, man. It's, it's where you want to be, though. You choose to be that. Yeah. It's not like, well, I'm just, I made average and that's the way I'm going to stay and that's just who I am. And see, dude, it's not that I'm better, I, that I know it. I still have to apply it. But me my, too, my man. My fear is this. Is fighting it. My fear is this. How can you apply it, Daniel, if you don't know it? So that's my, it's not that I'm any better. He said you can know everything and still fall short. It isn't that, that knowing it makes you clean, but you have to know it to put it to practice. 
So it isn't about the knowing, it's about the doing, but you can't do the doing without the knowing, and that's my issue. This one, this this scripture right here hit me when I was reading through Romans, and it's Romans, here we go, the numbers. Yeah. It's Romans 10. <laughs> I did 10. the same thing. Romans 10, I'll still use them. Yeah, well. Romans chapter 10, and it, it's, it's Paul talking to them. It says, brothers my, brothers, my heart's desire and prayer to God for them is that they may be saved. For I bear witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. Mm -hmm. They have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. Yeah. When I read that, I wrote out beside the scripture because it's true, sincerely ignorant. I love God. I love God, but yeah. it's not according to knowledge. It's not that I want to know him. It's just that I love him. The Jewish nation. Because of who he is. And it's the, just anybody else that I get a stinking poster of because I love their music yeah. and I hang them up on my wall in my room just like a little teenage girl or a teenage boy. And there they are. I don't know them personally. They do not know me, but I just love them. Yeah. I love them. Justin Bieber, I love you. Right. I love you, Justin. <laughs> Justin don't know who you are. Right. You don't even know Justin. Yeah. But I love him. Daniel. And it's the same way most of us treat God. I did for a long time. Yeah. Oh, I love God. Say you're doing it for God. I love God. I go to church. I love God. But did I know him? Does he know me? That's what's most important. Because look, there it goes. Lord, Lord, I never knew you. Lord, Lord, I never knew you. I think that's what he says to mm. us. Lord, oh, yeah. We say, Lord, Lord. He goes, I never knew you. Right. Whew, the scariest words in the Bible. Yeah. One of the top ones. Daniel, the Jewish nation, the Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes, the whole embodiment of the Old Testament, they thought that they were doing, listen to what they did. They killed God for God. Yeah. Yeah. See, they believed that what they were doing was for God, yeah. and they killed God. Killed God for God. Okay. If we don't, for their God. Why is all that in the Bible if, if, if that just went away? It's a big group in the Bible. You, you're either in that group, you're a disciple, or you're an unbeliever still today. Yeah. Okay, so right now we have a lot of people that are calling themselves church that are killing Jesus for Jesus. Wow. The same thing. Sincerely and, they, and, agree. and they say, well, I'm doing this for Jesus. Okay, Jesus came to fulfill it. They killed him. Did they, did they recognize God? It said they rejected him. But yet no one can see that we're doing the same thing now as culture and society and saying we're doing these things for God, and it's killing God. Mm. It's killing his word. Breaking I, his heart. I don't know what to do about it. The same thing happened, and then they act like, well, we're not doing that. That was the Jews. No, that's us. That's anybody that does what they did. They love me with their lips, but you know, their heart is far from me. Their worship is in vain, he said, which is without effect. We're doing what we want to do. Yeah. If you do Poor God. you do all that stuff and you don't, it's in vain. And you, if someone said GD in front of you, you'd flip out. Mm -hmm. But yet you spend an hour basically through your actions saying GD over and over and over again, nonstop. God GD said, in action. that worship of me is in vain. There's You're GD using, in word and GD in action. Yeah. So, but we don't doing what see we want to do for God. You know, we're doing what we want to do for God, and we're killing him. We're killing him, breaking it, his heart. We're crucifying him all over all again, over, and over said. and over and over. And what does Ephesians say about that? Yeah, it does, man. We've we've got to stick to what well, it said. Once you've been brought to the truth and then if you fall away it's impossible for you to be brought That's back it. to redemption because you're crucifying him all over, over and again. over and over and over you're not you're not seeing that he set you free and you're you're doing that to him you're great gatsby and him you're lord of the flies in him and what's going on man he he wants your life he wants everything so i mean i don't doing know doing what we want to do yeah you ought to God. cut that. You need to cut that. Yeah. That's a that's a pretty good one. It's scary. It is scary. You see it. But we, I don't think... Raise that, your hands up. We're doing what we want to do for God. But nobody listens to what we're saying. Like but the point of that, we're doing what we want to do for God, it <laughs> don't work. I don't... That I mean, ain't how it is. That ain't what he says. That is totally opposite 
of the whole message, the whole gospel, the whole way everything God works. Well, just like I said, man, when he lays out the, the worship stuff and everything, have you ever been to a place that looked like that? I never have. So why not? I mean, why don't the leaders say, I want to be a biblical church if we're doing this thing? I mean, it, I mean that's on you, dude. That's it. It's on uh, every one of us. I mean. It's on me. It's on you. It's on all of us. You know, but but – I mean, we have it right there. So it's right I don't there. know, man. That's what I have passion for. But what you uh, what you got there? You got That's a it. scripture? You no, no. Read? I was just looking looking through here as it was. I got all these things rolling yeah. around. He he brings so much back, and he and I, I just love him. And and it goes along with his word. I'm like always. I'm always praying, Lord, help me remember everything that I read. Help me help me know you. Yeah. Help me know you, and just and just use me and to know me. Mm-hmm. and let me know you and you know me i mean that's what's most important even paul says that what's most important is he knows you mm-hmm. it ain't the truth of you knowing him yeah that's important but it's him knowing you yeah. and the only way he can do that is through jesus christ his word and isn't we i don't know if i've just written this or said it before but isn't a good example of that like say you're following around a band or something and they don't know who you are you're yeah. in you're in the nickel seats man you're you're up there in the nosebleed section they don't know who you are you could follow them around for the whole season they're touring yeah but if you end up working your way up to the front row and every time they play you're on the front row they're going to know who you are Mm -hmm. and they might not even talk to you at that exact moment but you sit there and they're gonna be like hey did you notice that dude that one dude with the you know they'll see you but will they know you personally with the fu man chew yeah. up, up there he's always there yeah and then Wearing that shirt what if you did that for five years 10 years you follow him you're on the front row every time i would say probably you know at some point they're going to invite you backstage even say maybe you've been following us around so much you're a crazy guy come on in here and I'm not reducing it. Jesus can put you on the front row like that. Oh, yeah. But life is He'll the, bring you in. Like yeah. Jesus is what brings us in yeah. to he'll, the throne room. He'll, he'll He's right that. there. As soon as you accept Jesus, Jesus draws you in. The Father yeah. draws you in. Bam, you're in the throne room. But the work of life, the fight of oh, yeah. Paul is working your way through the crowd. That's it. And getting Going to where the crowd. he sees that you're with him. That's it, man. You know. That's it. And, uh, fight the good faith. Man, that was a cool book that you... You had brought there. You want to read a couple of those things, man? I like. Uh, we were kind of on the, the literary. It's, thing. it's kind of just thrown out there. I, I think mean, it, it was just, cool. Yeah, it was just right there, and uh, it's weird how things just kind of pop up. Yeah. And I read it a little bit of it, and it's a, it's really a journal. We're, we're going to keep it here, and we'll we'll yeah. jump into it anytime we. I was you know, just going to bring it just whenever we had a, a cool thought, or you know, the Lord. It ain't really a cool thought. Yeah. It is cool, yeah. but it's the Lord. Lord gives it to us, and so I always love to remember this thing. I keep me a journal now to write stuff down in. But I thought it'd be neat to maybe write some notes here or yeah. before or after the show or during the show or whatever. Right. Uh, but then I started actually looking at it, what it was, and I was like, wait a minute. This might be actually cool to even break out, and it's called I Need to Unplug. Yeah. And it's just a journal, and it's talking about getting away, getting away from all this technology, all this stuff It just crams up into our minds and just – makes our life we think easier but it's actually just it's junk and making it more complicated making it more complicated and keeping us busy and keeping us away from the actual truth and uh it's just a it's it's for our time yeah it's right now for our yeah. generation now because we just it's a big boom we're scattered technology is a big covered, boom aren't we? yep it says do you see screens when you close your eyes freak out when there's no cell phone reception Keep hitting refresh on Facebook like a rat in a skinnier box. (laughs) Are you beginning to think that this may be a problem? Enough with the digital distractions, the internet, the smartphone, the dumb phone, the video games, the TV, the tablet. All that noise, all that information, all those questions. It's all too much. You need quiet. You need to think. You need to unplug. Is there anywhere in the world of 24-7 connectivity where you can get a moment of peace? And this is a secular book. This is not right. speaking on God. This has nothing to do. There's no scripture in this. There's no <clears> nothing <throat> that has anything pointing to Jesus Christ. It's just weird that there also is evidence where people are going, you know, wait a minute. All this mess that you think we're peaceful laid back in the recliner checking out our tablet or cell phone or on their laptop or on our computer. We think we're chilling and it's entertaining to us. And we're shoving this stuff in our face when actually 
if you look at it for real, we're not finding peace in our lives because we're not seeking God. Well, just ask yourself, how is that working? When but you I have do... no time to read. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. But I have no time to spend time in prayer. And look at all the time we spend doing all this stuff where we don't have to do that makes you feel like poo. It makes you feel like poo, doesn't it? If you do all that, I mean, all the time, don't you just feel yucky? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It, it's like when you were a kid, man, if your parents ever like went out and left you there, something and, like I had a couple of times, my parents wouldn't let me watch TV that much. But if I sit there and I watch cartoons for too long, mm -hmm. I would feel like kind of physically sick as a kid because oh, I was yeah. an active kid. It literally makes you sick. That's why nobody's got energy to do anything, man. You need to get out, plant a garden this year. I'm going to be talking all about the garden this year. That's Just cool. go do, you know, and then you'll you'll be able to do this stuff if you really have a need for it, and it'll be okay. But, man, it's it's whack. It's whacked out. Doing what he made you for. Now. Doing what he made you for. Well, I, I don't know what that is, Daniel. I don't know what that is, Brad. If you get to know him. You'll, You'll know, know what that is. He brings meaning to your life. How many times do we have to say it? It's the rela you're not going to know it, though, unless you're in communion with That's him. That's it. You're not going to know it. Communion. You're going to be lost, doing what you're not supposed to be doing, totally unhappy. Yeah. Who you're with. Yeah. What you're doing. Yeah. Your life in general, with yourself especially. Yeah. I'm just, you know, I'm happy making money. Is that what you were created to do, to make money? Well... I know that we weren't because the, one of the requirements at the end is going to be that we can't buy or sell. So Jesus never bought or sold what I saw. Maybe he did when he was a carpenter before he started preaching. I don't know, but they're in a recorded instance of it. And it can't be the key to life because to get in the kingdom at some point, we're not going to be able to buy or sell. So, no, life is not about buying and selling. It's not about economy, Daniel. Yeah. We may do those things, but we've made our whole existence about things that are not what our whole existence is about. That's it. You know, you got another one of those little things you want to read? Yeah, just this, this is one right here. Probably just maybe try to throw one in there every once in a while. Yeah, read, a, little book read a couple more. It I says, like them. you think that machine is your friend, but it's not. Yeah. You think that machine is your friend, but it's not. Right. Well, that's a quote from somebody. I mean, when we depend on the machine, then we're dependent on the machine. I mean, there's certain things that we that have made our life easier, but there's certain things that we depend on that we spend more time fixing the machine than we do if we just did it ourselves without depending on the machine. That little friend, that little that little that little quote right there reminds me of scripture in the Bible. It reminds me of what Jesus says. You are no longer my servants, but I call you friends. I just wrote a piece on that yesterday. I was really studying it. He said, I've, I've called you friends because I've let you know all of the business. I've let you in on the kingdom. You know everything that I heard the Father say. We have it through Jesus. We know the truth. He revealed it to us. He said, I've called you friends. There's nothing that I know that I haven't disclosed to you. For we can understand it. For a servant never knows what his Lord is up to or doing, but a friend knows all things. We're that because he tells them it's powerful i am in you and you are in me and we are in the father and we have a relationship and he'll reveal it and you can understand it we are groot we are groot we are groot wasn't that the coolest i mean talk about that a little cool part. I, we watched that movie gardens of the galaxy mm -hmm. it was really cool but say what you're referencing there tell the little story what's well, just because a... see we could just say we are groot that's what yeah. we do, but y'all just get that. I mean, what is the story? This is the. This it's is pretty the neat. Plant like guy, tree looking dude. It yeah. grows. Right. I really don't know how to explain it. He was just in this movie, and he just kind of. That's what he would always say. I am Groot. I am Groot. I saw every answer to every question to every whatever situation. I am Groot. No matter what. Hey, is it sunny outside? I am Groot. Yeah. You know, as a, what are you doing? I am Groot. Who yeah. are you? I am Groot. I mean, yeah. it's just everything. 
And then uh, he he knew that they was going to die. They were going to perish at one point during the movie. And uh, this great big huge ship was going to hit the ground. And it was just going to, you know, it's, they're, they're doomed. And they all knew it. Yeah. And he just kind of opened his arms, covered them all, and yeah. grew around them. Yes. And protected them. Made a cocoon, yep. didn't he? And, and his best friend runs up to him and he's like, you know, what are you doing? You're going to die. You know, you're on the outside. We're on the inside. But you're going to die. You know, you're dying for us. He knew what he was doing. And at that time, he changed the whole movie. His whole line was, I am Groot. And at that one point in that movie, he goes, we are Groot. Yeah. That's we are one. Yes. And I mean, it just. And that is a perfect word picture of Jesus Christ. Yeah. That we had, we were going to be destroyed. Yeah. And he came and he covered us up. And inside, they were as peaceful and safe and little lights flying around. Yeah. And even outside, had lights. outside. Yeah was death and destruction. That's it. Darkness. And see, in Christ, you are safe. We are. Jesus. He is. We are. It's all us. He came to give us that. But see, if you're outside of his protection, it's destruction. I knew you and me. Why would you want to be outside of it? Just be Groot. (laughs) Be Jesus. You know? Praise God. He wants to be Groot in you. That's it. So that's a cool place to leave it on for me, unless you want to Same. cover anything else. I I'm mean, good, man. we are Groot, and and be that Groot. And but you know what? So many times, man, we run out of his shelter. We don't want. We don't trust him. We're like it's confined in here. It's like, dude, you would rather have death and destruction. Mm. Just there's total know, freedom in Jesus Christ. Total freedom. There's no constraint the only constraint we have is our flesh yeah if you feel constrained it's your flesh it's not jesus yeah he's free he has set you free he's life man and everything everything else everything, and, everything and gives else. Us a, praise god i want to end on end with this right here i cool. kind of <clears throat> end with something and this yeah. right here is just it was on my mind through the week yeah and it spoke to me and it asked me that same question and i'm still dealing with this okay it says what fruit are we getting from the things we are doing what fruit are we getting from the things we are doing? And that's why I just want to ask anybody and everybody. He asked me that. What fruit am I getting from the things that I'm doing? What fruit are you getting from the things you're doing? I just finished pruning all these fruit trees, 35 fruit trees. Hmm. I took off a lot of branches that weren't producing fruit. Now I'm hoping I get more fruit. That's it. They will not grow and produce fruit if you don't do it. We're the same way. So what branches in me and you today aren't yield to the pruner and just tell him to lop it off and and know that you're not losing you're gaining that's it you're not losing you lose yourself to find yourself you lose that branch to gain a hundred more apples but But sometimes it hurts what fruit are we getting from the things we are doing this this just goes back to the reaping what you sow if you're if you're if you're sowing into bad you're going to reap. You're going to, if you're sowing into Jesus Christ, what yeah. do you think you're going to reap? What do you think you're going to reap from the yeah. creator of you, creator of the universe, all good, all love? What do you think you'll reap from him if you're sowing into him? Right. But what if you're sowing into all this other stuff? There you what go. are you going to get from it? What are you getting from it? No root, no fruit, no group. <laughs> <laughs> that is it. That is it, brother. So. No root, no fruit, no Groot. No Groot. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see y'all. Praise the Lord.